Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The regular scheduled meeting of the town council of the town of Southern Shores for February the 5th is in session. So I invite you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. As you all know, it's been my practice to call attention to any of our citizens that uh, we have lost since our last meeting. And tonight, I have two more for you. That's, we lost B. Garantana, who was 93 years old. B was a wonderful lady who lived in town for oh, maybe 30 years. And we'll miss her. And also, we lost Melissa Wright. And Melissa was a special person for us. She was a Dare County emergency medical technician, widely respected, greatly admired, known to our firefighters, known to our police, worked at each station. Uh, she also worked duck for a period of time. So we've lost Melissa, and uh, she will be sorely missed. So join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Council, there are two problems with the agenda tonight that I would call to your attention. Uh, under new business, tabs A and B, a uh, situation has arisen that makes it inadvisable for Council to consider that tonight. And I move, uh, move to strike item 9, A and B, from the agenda for this evening. And I'll second the motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Fine. And council, it's necessary uh, this evening for us to hold a closed session. So I move that a closed session be added to the agenda after item 10 D. I need a second. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any other changes to the agenda? If not, I need approval. I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as amended. We have a second. I'll second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Minutes of January 22nd, 2013 are for you, for your approval. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes as uh, presented. We have a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is tab two. A couple of routine items for our consideration. What is your pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I have a second. Second. Opposed? Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Jody has. Uh, a little bit under the weather tonight. She thought it would be prudent for her to just stay home. She'll watch it on the TV. 
<laughs> at an appropriate time. She sends our apologies, but it just doesn't make sense for her to be here. We turn our attention to our finance officer, Bonnie. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, before you, you have the financials, which are the first six months of this current fiscal year. Um, basically, the, the first sheet is a um, summary of the revenues against the expenditures. Um, and if you go to the, the next pages, it kind of breaks down those revenues and expenditures in a little bit more detail. Um, if you take a look, a lot of this is timing, um, and I'll go through these and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, for instance, the month of October, you can see that the, um, the other revenues is, the difference is 38165 less this year than last year. That is mainly because of insurance proceeds that we got last year uh, or the, in 2011. The, um, it's, it's October of 2012 versus October of 2011. So the prior period it being 2011 of October, um, insurance proceeds for Irene damage for the roofs here at the Pitt Center and the Town Hall in the amount of 15,000, and ABC revenue we received in October in the amount of 22,000, which makes up most of your difference there. You can see that the ad valorem that we are ahead of where we were um, as far as collecting this October as compared to the prior. Um, and basically, you can see the main difference is there in our shared revenues, the occupancy tax, the sales tax, the land transfer tax. Um, for instance, the land transfer tax, had an, uh, we took in less overall money is like $35,000 less than the prior October and also our percentage went down because of our um, other municipalities increased their tax rate that sort of thing so our percentage went from 12.60 percent down to 11.02 so you have two things happening there you have less money and we have a lesser portion of the pie same thing with the occupancy tax so that, that's pretty much the revenue um, explanation for October. Then if you look November of 2012 as compared to November of 2011, you'll see that once again, the ad alarm is a time and issue. I mean, some people, you know, last year paid their, ta um, their taxes earlier, this year they didn't. I mean, that's the main difference there. The other thing is um, the shared revenues again, which is the same in the percentages and the amount collected was less. And also, our ABC revenues of 19,000 came in in November of 2011, but we did not receive it in 2012. You'll see down in December we received them then. Um, and going to the December revenues, you'll see that most of those are <clears throat> pretty self-explanatory. I mean, the you know, like I said, they're most time and issues. You can see there where. We received 35,000 in December for our ABC revenues versus having some in October, some in November. So it all ends up being a time and issue as far as the revenues. Now, if you'll go to the next page, the expenditures, um, the explanation on those for October, the current period, of course, being October of 2012, the prior period, October of 2011, um, the, dif the difference in October in the administration department is minimal, but most of that is for the um, Dare County collection and um, salaries and computer service. I mean, it's just kind of, and most of that is, you know, minimal. So that will end up, <clears throat> the 7,000 is what it was for administration for the police department. Most of that difference was overtime. Um, $5,000 was due to being short to officers. 
and um, $15,000 was the equipment on the vehicles, um, the two vehicles that we gotten. Again, all time and issues. Um, <clears throat> and then the sanitation department, the new recycling contract um, saved us money, and then also we had not yet received the bill for the landfill tipping fee. Don't worry, it came in November, so. <laughs> Um, and of course, I think streets are pretty self-explanatory. Gravy Pond, Deer Pass, Spindrift, Public Works, the, um, the significant savings from 2011 to 2012. We had the cleanup of Irene in 2011 that we did not have in 2012. And in code enforcement, the, um, the increase is due to the contracted services that we have with Dare County for our inspections. For the month of November, the um, amount that's different, the increase in the administration department is due to unemployment payments that we had to pay. In November, we have two months of the year that we have three pays, November being one of them. So your salary numbers look like they're up for the month of November, but then you'll see a savings in December. So it kind of evens out, but that, that's pretty much that. And then for November, we hired two police officers, so the salaries there and also the three pays. The saving and the recycling, I mean, in the sanitation is still the recycling contract. Streets, once again, Gravy Pond, Deer Path. The Public Works Department, the, the savings there, most of that was for the canal. I mean, it's not a whole lot here, but that savings was come from the canal and Code enforcement, the same thing, salaries and benefits. So, of course, if your salaries are more, your benefits are more. So that's what that is, and that's all due to the three pays that we had for the month of November. When you come to December, you can see that there's a lot of um, savings there. Once again, that, that is the, the three pays. We had three pays in December prior year. We had two pays this past year. That's where most of those savings are. Um, and once again, for the public works department, that savings is the canals and the salaries and benefits in that department. Any questions? No. Okay. I don't have any. Thank you, Bonnie. It would appear that we're doing very well and are on schedule. Staff report, Mr. Haskett, town planner. Thank you, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, for uh, January, we had six zoning permits issued, two lot, two lot disturbance permits were issued, 25, uh, or excuse me, 24 building permits, which consisted of one new single family dwelling, one addition, one remodel, and 21 others. 72 building inspections were conducted at 49 different job sites. Uh, 10 single family dwellings are currently under construction throughout town uh, in one bank. And the total amount of fees collected in uh, January was 8, $8,368.95. Also wanted to touch on the, uh, if you remember at the last meeting, I reported about a uh, audit, automated ICE vending machine zoning text amendment. The planning board did review that at their uh, January meeting and they recommended approval four to one. And uh, Mayor Denny has set a public hearing for this amendment which will be held at the March 5th council meeting. So you all will be receiving that information shortly. Uh, also, um, or lastly, with respect to uh, AT&T at the last meeting, there was discussion about the Triangle Park and if there was still any discussion or interest in that, the tower, the flag, flagpole stealth tower. Uh, we met with an AT&T representative today and they are bringing that project back. And um, it is my understanding that they are going to the AT&T is going to work with the SSCA in finalizing a lease agreement. And then after that, they will be coming to the town to apply for the required conditional use permit. So that'll be something coming up. They didn't give me a estimated time, but uh, there's something coming down the works as well. Any questions? We received the state's approval. Yes, sir, we did. We did receive in writing the state's approval of the town's land use plan that has been officially uh, certified, CRC certified and adopted. So that was always, it's always good to see. 
Do you yeah, know if yes, AT&T completed their upgrades to the antennas that are on the water towers? They are not complete yet, not to my knowledge, no, sir. And uh, US, U.S. Sailor still has not provided us with an application for their upgrade. So, any other questions? Our land use plan is dated 2008. It's based on 2008, yes, sir. This strikes me as being rather. I think it's quick. <laughs> you think it's quick? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next one's going to take at least six years or seven years, so this one's easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planner. It's great. <laughs> Chief Cole. <laughs> Police. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, the police report for uh, January uh, 2013. Uh, some of the highlights, officers conducted 39 foot patrols, uh, 38 traffic control, also those were at the uh, elementary school. Uh, residence checks, uh, 204. 225 were business checks. Investigators followed up on 32 uh, different incidents, different cases that they're working on. Uh, we had four motor vehicle accidents in January. Uh, responded to two burglaries, 20 alarm calls, 28 suspicious person calls. Uh, we had four motorist assists, as well as six mutual aid calls. As far as incidents and crimes that were reported in January, uh, we had uh, two burglaries, uh, four larcenies, one criminal damage, and four were drug related. Uh, we made three criminal arrests. Officers conducted 93 traffic stops. Out of those 93 traffic stops, they issued uh, 45 written citations and 41 uh, warning citations and uh, one parking citation in January. One other thing that I would like to note um, for the police department, about five months ago, we submitted uh, pictures of our police vehicle. Uh, we had never done that before to uh, the Governor's Highway Safety Traffic uh, Committee. And we were successful. We were one out of 12, because there's 12 months in a year, uh, in case you didn't know that. Uh, but they selected our picture, two of our police officers, Sergeant Slagle, Officer Brickhouse. Uh, You'll note the month of July, uh, and I'd like to hand a couple of these out to uh, the council members. Okay. We didn't get the center fold of December. Well, <laughs> not that kind of <laughs> We have those for sale. The Governor's Highway Safety Program. Yes, uh, over 100 uh, police agencies usually uh, enter their, their vehicles in that, so we were, we were pretty happy to, to find that they had selected us uh, as one of their... Uh, Month of July, months. there we are. Slagle and Brickhouse. Took your picture, though, in Manny. Well, uh, let me tell you, <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get those cars on the beach and get them back off without... plus. At the time that we took these pictures, unfortunately, the North Marina wasn't in the best of shape. Um, there was some work going on. Um, so that was the closest we could get. <clears throat> Any questions? Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Harvey. Chief Cole. Thank you, Chief Cole. Welcome, Chief Harvey. <laughs> You've been busy. You've been busy lately. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Good evening. Yeah, yes, we have been busy. We had 33 total calls for the month of January, uh, three fires, and, and two of them were legitimate fires, not just te technical reports, and 25 first responder uh, calls. It's interesting to note, I guess, that since January 1st, 
we've been involved in four multi-alarm fires on the Outer Banks, um, which is probably more than we've had in the last five years. Any questions? See what happens when you leave. Yeah. You responded to four four multi-alarm multi -alarm fires, mm -hmm. one in Duck, two in Kill Double Hills, and right. one in South Nags Head. Okay. Two of them this past weekend. We were about both Saturday night and Sunday morning mm -hmm. on two separate calls. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. See the president of the Southern Shores Civic Association. Thank you, Ross. Civic CPOA. Thank you. It's a quiet meeting too so far, isn't it? <laughs> We turn to our town manager for an agreement relating to the Tall Pine Bridge reconstruction. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, recall this, the Tall Pine Bridge was accepted in what DOT calls its municipal big bridge program, which the overall funding comes from the Federal Highway Administration DOT is basically a pass-through administrator of the funds. Uh, when we first uh, started down this path, there was an estimate at the time of uh, $150,000 for the engineering, what was called phase one. That was an estimate, and I was, we were told that as we got into it uh, and picked a contra uh, an engineering firm that that amount could go up or down depending on the real numbers as they negotiated. Uh, it was found that the number was low. Um, the ultimate amount that the DOT did agree uh, for reimbursement to the uh, engineering firm um, turns out to be um, there will be an additional $78,985 uh, for reimbursement of the municipality and our match would be an additional 19,746. Um, so the agreement would need to be need to be amended um, to cover the increases. The additional uh, funds, total supplemental funds of $78,985, 19 of which is for the town. Um, I researched this, and there are two other bridges in North Carolina or Eastern North Carolina that are similar. One has already been completed, and one is being engineered now, and both of those were in the 300,000 range. So I felt that the comps bore out this, uh, the estimate increase. Um, so what we would need is if there are no, I'd be glad to try to answer any questions, but that's basically what, what it is. Everything that uh, DOT and the engineer got together for each line item turned out to be, um, needed to be increased slightly to come up with the real number. Um, we would need to, if, council, if it's council's pleasure, we'd need to approve the supplemental agreement. And we would also need to approve um, a budget amendment as well to take care of that. In your tab, you can see some of the other bridges that, um, that are similar and that came out to be closer to 300,000. One in Pine Knoll Shores, and I believe the other is in Hyde County, if I'm not mistaken. So our share would increase a little bit less than twenty thousand dollars. And once we execute this, the engineering firm would start. They would be underway. Any questions, Council? I suggest we Consider these two items separately. Passing one will make the other a given, but for the record, let's, let's have a motion to approve the supplemental agreement as uh, brought to us by the manager for tip number B 
5417, dated 116, 2013. I so move. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And to go along with this, we need to approve budget amendment number five as proposed by the manager and the finance officer to uh, make our prior approval effective and meaningful. Okay. I have a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve uh, budget amendment number five. I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Done. I went over public comment. Jody isn't here to keep me on on the agenda. Did we have anyone sign up for public comment? Well, does anybody want to say anything? I see all those familiar faces out there. We're down to our town manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Um, have a report tonight and I did want to start off by tell, that, telling you that I will be attending the North Carolina County and City Managers Conference which is an annual conference in Research Triangle Park starting tomorrow afternoon and Thursday and Friday but I'll be available by all the usual and most up-to-date means of communication if you need to help me. Um, the department heads are working on their budgets we've already given them notice uh, to do that they are due back uh, mid-February. So we're on schedule for our bu budget preparations for this year. Um, as you recall, at the February 19th workshop, I'll be, we'll be going over some areas, some new areas that might be proposed for the budget for the upcoming year. Without the dollars out the side them, and I didn't want to go over some of the items that you have either brought up this year or I've brought up that we may want to consider for budget this year. Um, I would propose to the council for, for thought that the actual budget planning session, the, the first formal budget planning session, uh, be at the uh, workshop meeting in April, April 16th. And that's what our target will be, staff to bring you a draft at that particular time so we can start that process. Um, I did want to announce that we are proceeding with the uh, bid packet, developing the bid packets for the canal dredging phase two. Uh, both Mr. Anloff and he's being assisted in that uh, by Mr. Bennett in researching and making sure that we have uh, sufficient specifications that we can be, that can be reviewed to be to put out for this particular project. So we are on schedule with that. I'll also tell you we're on schedule with the uh, financing component as well. Uh, we got bids in and we made a uh, selection today lowest, uh, most qualified financial institution, and we'll be working with them to be able to bring you back a, uh, a formal loan to approve as we get closer to local government commission time late spring. Um, the Trinity Bridge was is now open again, of course, after it's three days of repair, and uh, the, the decking will be exposed to allow for more compaction over time. Just going to allow that to sit there until we the opportunity strikes when we're com comfortable that there's no longer any um, uh, decrease in the elevation of the bridge deck. Um, I did want to, in a minute, go over the uh, C and D report that I have for us from Kitty Hawk, but I have one item that I did want to report to you tonight, which is a <clears throat> follow up on the enforcement initiative that the police department and the community resource officer uh, performed this year with your new dogs on the beach ordinance or no dogs on the beach, whichever way you want to go with it. As recall, we, uh, the council amended the ordinance last year to allow dogs on the beach between certain hours uh, if they had a leash. And I will say that the community resource officer being backed up by the police department uh, was very, very vigilant during the whole time. Um, he gave out numerous uh, warning, verbal warnings, was very professional, 
he actually gave out some some uh, written warnings and some civil civil uh, citations. Unfortunately, we had one instance where he had to give out a criminal citation for a willful violation of the town code, and this was after ten uh, ten warnings, ten total warnings. Same citizen. Uh, that case was resolved this week in Dare County District Court. And I'm reporting to you that that defendant was sentenced to 12 months unsupervised probation. He has to perform 36 hours of community service in a 60-day period, a $75 fine, and pay court cost of court. So I was happy about that resolution because we worked long and hard on that case, and the judge recognized that. So I think that's a, a recognition of the hard work that the police and the CRO did on summer. Um, I did want to go over with you the report back from the managers of Kitty Hawk and Duck. We talked about the construction and demolition debris uh, transfer site at Kitty Hawk. And we did come up with an understanding, and I understand that the town manager talked to the board at Kitty Hawk's meeting last night, and we, would, we have a March 1 uh, projected start date for this new program. Um, basically, Kitty Hawk has agreed to allow Southern Shores and Duck residents to use their const Kitty Hawk construction and demolition debris dumpster on a load per load basis. Um, they would charge a fee for, for instance, me to haul a load of C&D to that site and dump it. What we worked out uh, was that the towns, both Southern Shores and Duck, would actually issue a permit here to somebody who wanted to use the CND dumpster. And they would take it over and hand it to the attendant, dump, and the attendant would turn that into the town hall and we'd get billed for it. And therein lies the decision that um, I wanted to present to you. Um, the fee is going to cost, uh, it's, it's, the tipping fee is $65 a ton for Kitty Hawk. So the fee that would cost a citizen to dump would be $50 a load. Um, if they wanted to use that site, it would cost them $50 per load to go over there. The question would be, does the town of Southern Shores want to subsidize that use or do we want to pass that cost on to the citizen? wants to use it. And I would have proposed to you initially to consider that the citizen would do that, go in and buy the permit from us, give us $50, and then we would just use that $50 to pay Kitty Hall when we got invoiced at the end of the month. That would give us an opportunity to determine how many people are using it. If it became very popular later, you might consider incorporating that into the budget. But I just don't, in my heart, think we're going to have that many people using it right off the bat the way we need to go and talk about it being a town service. But it's, I would like to get y'all's comments on it. Uh, Peter, what, uh, what can we define as a load? Is that a, a That's a good question. Load or a it is a half, a Kitty Hawk considers a load as half a, half a truck load. What size truck? A regular pickup truck load. Okay. So that's gonna cost somebody $50 to roll in with a half of that. And it's, I don't know why it's a half other than you can get a lot of weight in a half or you can not get a lot of weight in it. But it's $50 for half of a, I guess it's quarter ton, I'm not sure. But there's, there's no weigh facility there, is there? There's no way to weigh it. Otherwise, they drive it to Manny. So that would be the alternative, like they do now. But that's, that's what we've been able to come reach common ground on. So it's either, if we wanted to go ahead and initiate this, we can, it's just, my thought is we would develop a permit here, and Duck would have a similar permit, but we would just issue that to a citizen for $50, and they could come in as many times as they want and buy a permit for $50. I'd have a sense that this is going to consider, con, uh, going to result in considerable debate and I would suggest to council that we make it a discreet agenda item for a council meeting. It'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. 
to understand. We have You'd like to put it on for the next? Four people in agreement. Okay. So we'll put it on for the agenda for the next um, work session. It requires some uh, thinking, I think, on my part at least. Mm -hmm. it, in our mind, it would be very easy to start out with the permit system. We just have to develop the permit, print it, et cetera. The question is, do we take $50 or do we just absorb that um, or create a line item for, or do a budget amendment for a program? And I have no idea how many people would use it. We just still can't get a grip on that. I have no idea. What, what did, uh, how did Duck participate in this? Did, did they see that as a possible need before? Uh, they have uh, citizens who drive to, to, uh, to Man's Harbor or where the CMD site is, and they will, Duck, Duck was interested in the program. Like, I don't know if he had a grip on how many people will use it. He, did, he didn't mention that to me. Let's, let's get it on the agenda. And that's my report. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Any questions of the manager? Huh? Gravy Pond got paved today. Gravy Pond is in the process of uh, being finished paving. As soon as they finish paving, uh, I believe I talked to Mr. Sager this afternoon. They will start dressing the, uh, the shoulders and doing all the other amenities mm -hmm. that go along with that. Town Attorney? Uh, I don't have anything in particular to report, Mr. Mayor, but if you uh, would like any assistance with your motion to go into closed session, I'll be glad to help with that. When you okay. Us. Thank you. I don't have anything. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Lahan? Nothing. I do. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to keep us uh, happy here, um, liven up the crowd. Um, I went to a meeting, uh, Peter and I went to a meeting uh, to the Outer Banks Chamber of Commerce last week and they had the NC DOT representative, not the one that was scheduled to be there, but another one to um, tell the people there regarding projects that are going on around uh, the um, county and um, NC DOT projects and I didn't want to uh, bore you with a lot of stuff. There's a, they covered everything they could imagine, but I would like to tell you a couple of things. One thing is at the Bonner Bridge, um, they're going to put a, a test pile in. It's going to be 136 feet long, 36 inches square. It'll do a static load tested at 3 million pounds and 100,000 lateral pounds of testing. So that's coming up sometime in the spring. They're going to try that one out. Uh, the Alligator Bridge will be closed from April the 2nd to the 14th, so when, if you're going out to uh, Raleigh, uh, you can take the long way because it'll be closed to replace a bearing, which they hope they have no problems doing. Collington Roads is going to have the uh, shoulders paved uh, in the spring of 2015, and it'll be constructed in 2017. But the most interesting fact, I asked a question of them regarding the uh, North Carolina 12, the work they've been doing on 12 and the, and the sand in the road they keep building all the time and the sandbags. And I said, what's your budget line for that? When does your budget run out of money? Uh, how do you figure out what your budget should be? And the answer was very simply, it was they don't have a budget. And so uh, what they do is they do the work and then they ask the federal government for the money and then in turn the federal government pays them and they then ask for the money again the next time they do it and present their bills. So I guess as long as the federal government supplies money, it, it's okay. But on the another note, they do have a um, website, uh, a Facebook page, an, an NC12 Facebook page, and you can go on the Facebook page and see what the status is of what they're doing down NC12, down by the S-curves or wherever they happen to be. So that's the first thing I wanted to just mention. The second thing is that um, I'd like to raise an issue with the council. It's not a major issue. It's not a big problem or anything, but the last two months we've got a uh, buyback request, uh, part of our um, consent agenda, which we seem to have to uh, approve any lots we buy back, but we don't have to approve any lots that we sell. Uh, so I don't know whether there's a necessity to do this. We tend to trust our staff with a four and a half million dollar budget every year, but somehow we've got to approve the buyback for the 500 bucks for a lot. Uh, 
or $200 in a lot of cases. So I was thinking maybe the council at some point we could discuss uh, maybe taking out that section upon request of the certificate holder upon approval of the town council. The town may purchase lots back, take out the approval of the town council and just let the staff buy back the lots at 200 bucks a clip and not have to go through this. So uh, update that little paragraph on rules of the cemetery and get it accomplished that way. So just a point. Is it an ordinance requirement? It says rules for the Southern Shore Cemetery. I don't know where that comes from. based on an ordinance. I don't know. It, it was adopted, incorporated, adopted by ordinance. It's so, adopted right. by ordinance, right. ordinance requirement. I suggest we put it on the agenda if uh, Councilman Kowalski, our cemetery keeper, would like to bring it to the council's attention. Sure. I'd like to do that. Okay. We can handle that. All right. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. People, we're, in a moment, we're going to move to go into closed session. And after it's approved, I'll declare a recess for you to be able to say your goodbyes to your neighbors. And for our photographer, our videographer, to uh, clear out. So I'll turn to the uh, town attorney to. Uh, Give us the language of a motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You'd want to move uh, pursuant to NCGS 143-318.11A3 to go into closed session to consult with the attorney retained by the town on the matter of Sampson Contracting Inc. versus the town of Southern Shores. I so move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're in recess.